Hey everyone, thank you for volunteering at the 2019 Pocono Road Race. Your involvement is absolutely important to this race being a success, our riders being kept safe, and uh, our main maintaining and building of a positive relationship with our local community and with motorists and with the region as a whole. Um, so if you're watching this, it's probably because you volunteered to be a driver. Um, the, dri the role of driver in this race is super important because um, you're maintaining the rider's separation from drivers and uh, you're sort of coming through intersections ahead of time and clearing things out of the way. Um, so I want to take a few minutes and talk about that role, um, how the caravan, the race caravan works. Um, and uh, at the end of this, my hope is that you will be able to execute your role uh, as a driver in the race um, with confidence and safe, uh, with safety as uh, the defining principle um, and in such a way that the race goes off without a hitch and racers have the, the best competitive experience that they can. So let's talk about the race caravan. Um, so this is going to be the lead caravan. The way that this works is we have a lead vehicle in the front. We have the main field of riders in the middle. Um, the riders are going to want to stay together as much as possible during the race in order to maximize their efforts and um, draft off of each at, off of one another. Um, the field is going to be followed by the follow vehicle, which is at the rear of the, that lead pack. And then after the follow vehicle, there's going to be a trickle of additional riders that are falling off of the main field because they can't keep up and they've fallen out of the draft. Uh, additionally, we will have a moto ref that's going to be sort of like in and out of the caravan uh, periodically, making sure that the race is going off safely uh, and fairly and that um, it's a good competitive environment for the riders. Um, a couple of things that I want to talk about. Um, first of all, let's talk about this lead vehicle here. The lead vehicle is super important um, because it is sort of charting the course for the riders. It's communicating to the riders where to go based off of its own direction. If the lead vehicle turns right, then the riders know to turn right. Um, this distance between the lead vehicle and the field is very important. If it becomes too close, then riders are going to be forced to slow down. If it becomes too far, um, then there's not as much of an effect and there's always a chance that a motorist that's trying to pass will kind of sneak in there um, in a bad way, in a dangerous way. So uh, really you want to be at least 25 yards, greater than 25 yards in front of the field and less than 100 yards away. Um, and <laughs> if you get too close, riders are going to start yelling at you. If you get too far, um, it's, you're sort of not fulfilling the purpose of lead vehicle. A um, couple things that I would say about the lead vehicle. Um, as you're going through intersections, you should always try to get there sooner. So if you're hanging out at around 50 yards in front of the field and you know an intersection is coming up, try to speed up a little bit and increase that distance so that you can get to the intersection first. Two reasons why. First of all, um, it's going to allow you to clear the intersection sooner so that the marshal can get out there, get positioned, know that the field is coming, and um, you know if there's any vehicles in the way, that they'll kind of get out of the way. Secondly, bikes are always going to corner faster than a vehicle. Um, it's really easy to underestimate how quickly a bike can come through an intersection. As motorists, we're very used to slowing down a little bit more gradually and then peeling out of the turn a little bit more gradually. Cyclists in a race, we're going to go full bore towards that intersection as fast as we can, slow down at the last possible moment, and then as soon as we're out of the intersection, we're going to be speeding up to our typical speed again. So get through the corner, get through the intersection as quickly as possible. Um, okay, so now let's talk about the follow vehicle. So one other thing I would say, the lead vehicle, you may or may not have an official with you. Um, you will have radios to communicate between the lead vehicle and the follow vehicle. So um, be prepared to take direction from the follow vehicle and vice versa. Um, right, so there will be communication. Now the follow vehicle, you will be having two ski patrollers in your vehicle with you um, that are going to be basically on call in case there's any accidents in this main pack. Um, you may also have a couple of wheels in your trunk or in your truck bed. Um, those wheels are in case someone in the front gets a flat, uh, they can um, replace that 
wheel really quick and then jump back in with the main field. Uh, it's going to allow them to have a better competitive experience. Um, the follow vehicle can be a little bit closer to the pack than the lead vehicle, um, at least 15 yards. Um, but you don't want to be too far off the back because again, this whole point, this is called a rolling enclosure. So we're not shutting down the roads for this race. We're simply temporarily closing them as the caravan moves through. So technically the, car the road would be closed from here to here. And if you are too far back, say 50 yards, you're essentially opening the caravan up to being passed by motorists who are in a hurry to get by. Um, we want to really force the motorists to only pass when it's absolutely safe. Otherwise, we risk um, you know, people making quick moves and not knowing what's going on. Um, so around 15 to 20 yards is that sweet spot there. Um, something to keep in mind as the follow vehicle is you are gonna be constantly passing riders to keep going up to the main field. Why? Well, this is a hilly race. People are going to be falling back. And as a rider in the back trickles back and is off of the back of the field, the follow vehicle will have to pass that rider. That rider is now no longer in the main field. So they, they must abide by the rules of the road now. And you need to move up so that you can continue to contain the main field. Um, so always pass riders safely. PA state law says that you need to allow four feet in order to pass, so make sure that you're allowing at least four feet. Um, drive as consistently as possible. You don't want to scare them, the, the riders. They do know that you're coming up, um, but always be looking out for that. Um, one other thing, there's always a chance that there might be a breakaway. A breakaway is when a pack of riders in the main field separate themselves ahead of the field and they're, they're trying to get to the finish line ahead of the main field. If that happens, the official may call back to you and say that you need to pass the entire field to start to contain the breakaway. If that happens, again, just do so safely. Um, wait for the official to give you that word and just be aware of your surroundings when that's happening. Um, Drive consistently, pass safely, communicate, communicate, communicate as much as you can. Um, something that I would say to you is you should overestimate the speed, how fast a, a cyclist can go. If you think a cyclist is going to be coming up behind you this fast, assume that they're actually going this fast. Um, and then vice versa, if, a cyclist is go if you think a cyclist is going slow, underestimate how slow they're going. Um, cycling is just a lot more on, on the extremes. Um, so um, we're going to talk about the neutral rollout here in a second, but um, always underestimate how slow a cyclist is going and overestimate how fast a cyclist is going. Okay, so now let's talk about the neutral roll, the neutral rollout. The first 2.5 miles of the race is going to be neutral. What that means is the entire race is going to be together. There will be everybody will be contained in that rolling enclosure. No one's gonna get dropped. No one's gonna be racing. No one's gonna be speeding ahead. And that's to promote cyclist safety as we're descending Montage Mountain into the main race course. Um, it is steep at times. And as a cyclist, I have gone down Montage Mountain at 45, 50, 55 miles an hour. Um, that's very fast and not safe when you're riding in a pack of 50, 60 riders. So what we're going to do is the lead vehicle is going to descend at no more than 30 miles an hour um, on the steep sections. And all of the riders are going to be behind that lead vehicle. No one's going to be allowed to pass. Uh, there's a chance you may have to go a little bit faster than that, but um, try to keep it under 30. And then on the flats, there's some flats on Glen Mara where um, riders will be around 20 miles an hour. Try to stay around 20 miles an hour. Don't go too, if you go too fast, um, then it's going to promote racing and we don't want racing, this is neutral. If you go too slow on the steep sections, riders are gonna be hanging out on their brakes the whole time. And that is also dangerous because then you get people's brakes burning up and people are kind of on edge. We wanna get them off the mountain as quickly as possible. Mainly, adjust to the 
speed of the pack within reason. If you see that the if during the neutral rollout that riders are 50 meters off the back of you, slow down. If you feel like you're being crowded and the ride the whole pack is right on your tailgate, speed up a little bit. Micro adjustments. For a cyclist, the difference between two miles an hour is very significant. For a motorist, the difference between two miles an hour is almost imperceptible. Um, that's about all I have as far as the main responsibilities of the lead and follow driver. Um, if someone gets a flat in this main field, pull off if you're in the follow car, get them up to speed, and then safely find your way back to the main peloton. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask myself, ask an official, ask a staff member. Um, again, this is absolutely important to the race going off without a hitch and it should be exciting for you as a driver. I mean, this is one of the coolest, uh, you're gonna be able to see and experience the race firsthand in a way that a lot of people don't ever get to see a race. So that should be really fun. Um, adapt, adjust, this is a dynamic, a dynamic position. Um, and again, thank you so much for being involved for bringing road cycling back to Northeastern Pennsylvania. This is awesome. See you tomorrow.